Okay. So let's have a look at Wave 2D async streams. So Wave 2D async streams. So this is using streams for um, the synchronization. So our kernel is the same as before, but in this case, I make five wave fields instead of three. So this is this is um, the code for an asynchronous um, solution. I create a number of streams, and so in this instance. I've created five streams plus one for compute. So I've selected um, I've selected one of the streams that I create as the compute stream, and that stream won't change throughout the entire simulation. So I go ahead and set up my wave fields, and what I'm doing differently for the host memory, which is the output for the planes. I'm using hip host malloc to make the output stack of planes as pinned as pinned memory. So I'm making the output stack of planes as pinned memory. And then I go ahead and make wave fields for as so I make arrays for the velocity and I create I allocate memory on the device for all all five wave fields. And we go ahead and run the solution as, as before. Now I'm using hip mem copy 3D async. Yep, so I'm using hip mem copy 3D async um, instead of hip mem copy or hip mem copy async. Um, for some reason, I encountered um, a strange bug when I tried to use asynchronous copies with an offset pointer um, in hip mem copy async. So I used hip mem copy 3D async, which allows me to um, pass in the original pointer instead of an offset pointer into pinned memory. So I did that. I used tip mem copy 3D async to copy the planes back. Um, so what happens at the start of each iteration is that I used hip stream synchronize. So I used, so this is the streams synchronization example. I use hip stream synchronize to make sure that IO is done for these three wave fields. So I use hip stream synchronize to make sure that none of the IO streams are still trying to copy these wave fields. So um, hip stream synchronize will wait for any of these streams that are still associated with these three wave fields. Because I choose my I choose my um, my past, present, and future wave fields, I choose them from the array of wave fields using modulo arithmetic. And you can see that, you can see that there. So I wait for any IO to finish. Then it launches a kernel and records um, records an event. So I launch a kernel. I launch a kernel, and then I record an event into the compute stream. So the kernel launch happens asynchronously, and I choose the compute stream to put to insert that kernel work. Um, into, uh, yeah, I choose the compute stream. And then I record an event into the compute stream. Then at the IO step, so the IO step um, is now associated with time step aft minus one. So that's U N minus one. 
the IO stream um, now waits for um, any compute from the past time step. So it waits for any compute associated with this wave field to finish before going ahead and performing the asynchronous copy. So this asynchronous copy can now occur, this asynchronous copy can now occur while this wave field here is regarded as u n plus 2 in the next time step. So this wave field here is safe um, to be copied while the next time step is occurring. So that's how we're achieving this synchronization. So we've got a stream-based synchronization um, to make sure that the three wave fields are clean or ready to copy. And then the a kernel is launched and then the host inserts a, um, an event into, um, into the compute stream and the, at, at a particular location. And then the IO stream waits for the event at the path time step uh, to finish before initiating a copy. So that's what, um, that's what we are doing and you can see here that the asynchronous calculation took 62.68 milliseconds as opposed to the synchronous calculation. So the synchronous calculation took um, 72.05. So there's a little bit of a saving there um, that you can obtain by um, by doing this asynchronous um, this asynchronous transfer. So, if we had a look at um, if we had a look at if we use Perfetto to have a look at the Wave two D async streams, um, you would see that there is. Um, the kernel, um, the kernel copies, or the, the copies are taking place at the same time as the compute is going on. So there's a um, there's a mem copy here, and there is the um, the wave field, the wave field kernel. So the kernel being executed at the same time as a copy, and that is the reason why we are we are getting this um this speed up of the um, asynchronous solution okay so that's one way that's one way to do um that's one way to do synchronization so we've done stream based synchronization and in the code um in the code um I'll just I'll just examine the results. So this is the results that are coming out of um, yeah of the asynchronous solution. So we can verify that um, we can verify that the residual um, is no is zero between uh, between the two results. So that's good. That means that means that our asynchronous solution is working. So in the previous solution, the host explicitly waits for each IO stream from previous iterations before the kernel works on active wave fields. So we can accomplish the same synchronization by recording an event after each copy. So we can record um, we, we can record an event after each copy and then having the compute stream wait for all events uh, before working on the kernel. So if we have a look at the wave 2D async events, we can see that instead of waiting on streams 
instead of waiting on streams, we're actually waiting on events now. And we wait on events um, that, um, that have been inserted um, into the uh, into the compute uh, stream. So, so let's, sorry, we're waiting on events. So hip stream wait events. So we're asking, sorry, we're asking the stream, the compute stream, we're asking the compute stream to wait on an event that is associated with an IO copy. So before we asked, we waited on the stream, so the compute stream waited on other streams, um, or the host waited on other streams. But in this instance, we're asking the compute stream to wait on an event. So here we go. So at the beginning of each iteration, we ask the compute stream to wait on events. And if I show this diagram. So the compute stream waits for events associated with these wave fields. Then the host launches a, a kernel and records an event into the compute stream. Then the host waits for the kernel from the previous iteration before um, launching, um, before launching um, a, uh, a copy. And then that those IO streams insert events. So those, um, then we insert into the IO streams um, an event. So let's go ahead and have a look at the copy process. So when we're doing the copy process, um, we if, when we uh, put, when we initialize a copy. We insert, um, we insert into the IO stream an event, um, and at the start of the next iteration, we ask the compute stream to wait on the event associated with any of the three wave fields. So, two different ways of doing synchronization: event-based or stream-based synchronization. There is another synchronization method is device-based synchronization, but that is a very heavy-handed approach. So that waits for everything to finish on the compute device before completing. Okay, so let's um, let's run the event-based um, the event-based solution. So running the event-based solution and the event-based solution took 60.75 milliseconds to complete. So that's still a good speed up over the synchronous solution. So let's um, let's have a look now at the RockProf trace wave 2D async um, events. So let's download that. And using Perfetto, we'll open the trace file. OK, so let's go ahead and open the trace file. All right, so you can see here that there are there are copies that um, that are taking place at the same time as kernel um, kernel kernels are taking place. So there there we go. So we've got we've got lots of um, and see how with the synchronous solution we had a regularly ordered pattern of copies and then kernels, copies and kernels. But here you the um, the asynchronous nature of our copies allows the executions of the kernels to bunch up a little bit or space themselves out. So um, the overall effect is that we've saved um, we've saved about 10, uh, 10 milliseconds off um, 
yeah, 10 milliseconds um, or around about just under 20% um, more performance um, through implementing asynchronous I.O. or I.O. at the same time as compute. And so let's plot the wave field. 